the father of the space age. That's what he called. You know what he said? I'm not the father of the space age. That's the real father of the space age. Okay, now this guy who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where's it all coming from? We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anam, when and where and what. But this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. Water and prayer and qibla can't take that away from us. So we need to prepare as much as we can. You know, but the, the technology, if you study where all this technology comes from, read about the magic and the enlightenment period. All these scientists were magicians. They were all into black magic. You read about uh, Francis Bacon. He, I, I just read a, a, a biography of Francis Bacon called Knowledge is Power, Magic and, and, and the Creation of Modern Science. Francis Bacon was reading all these magical books. Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke, great technologist. He actually uh, has most of the patents that enabled the satellites, right? If you look at his interview with BBC in 1961, where he predicts the internet, he predicts uh, the cell phones, he predicts uh, texting, he said that by the year 2000, people are going to have handheld devices that enable them to talk to anybody anywhere, right? Arthur C. Clarke said, and he has three laws of technology. One of his laws is no technology reaches a level of, of complexity except it becomes indistinguishable from magic. Now, I'm not a Luddite, right? I'm using a microphone right now. I'm not a Luddite, but this whole worshipful attitude towards technology to me is really stupid. The average American now spends more than four hours a day using a smartphone. By the way, that's what the surveys say. The real number's got to be higher than that, because that includes making phone calls, surfing the internet, checking emails, probably 115 other things, taking pictures, texting them to your brother-in-law. The typical person is obsessed. A smartphone is indispensable. You literally can't do without it. Misplacing your phone, even for a minute, is like losing a child at Disney World. It's all you can think about till you're reunited. But how healthy is this? Not spiritually healthy, you know the answer to that, of course, but physically healthy. Is it good for you to be with your smartphone all the time? As it turns out, it's probably not. Several published studies have linked mobile phone radiation to cancer. The National Toxology Program, a government organization, found that, quote, high exposure to radio frequency radiation used by cell phones was associated with clear evidence, we're quoting now, of tumors in rats. In 2012, Italy's Supreme Court upheld a ruling that said there was a link between a business executive's brain tumor and his heavy use of a mobile phone. Our trustee FCC, though, says there's nothing to worry about. According to our federal agencies, smartphones are entirely safe. Here's the problem with that claim. When the FCC screens for phone radiation, they allow companies to test their phones from up to 25 millimeters away from a person. That's really far. The manual for Samsung's Galaxy 10 Note Plus, for example, tells users that the phone, quote, should be positioned at least 0.6 inches away from your body. Okay, but when was the last time you actually held a phone at that distance? If you're not on speakerphone, you've never held a phone that far away. You have it right up against your ear. And when it's in your pocket, as it typically is, the phone is mostly about two millimeters away from your body. A lawsuit filed in December against Samsung and Apple cited its own test from an FCC accredited lab that showed at zero millimeters, the iPhone 8 hit users with five times as much radiation as federal exposure limits allowed. Samsung's Galaxy X8 was three times as high. 
Now, both of these companies regularly run ads encouraging the use of their phones in unsafe ways. An Apple ad shows a woman falling asleep with an iPhone touching her body. A Samsung commercial shows a pregnant woman holding a cell phone to her belly to take a sonogram. Can you imagine they did that? We should be worried about this. In this country, there's almost no public conversation about the risks of this. None. Let's hope we don't have to wait until the statistics become undeniable to talk about it. Radiation from your mobile phone may affect your memory, new research suggests. The study found that when teens frequently held their smartphones to their ears, increasing their brain's exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, it had a significantly adverse effect on their visual memory, especially when the cell phone's signal was weak. Go to settings on the phone, all right, under general, under settings. Then go to about, which is at the top. You got there? About, yes. Okay, now you have to scroll all the way down to something you don't normally see, called legal. You got to legal? All right, now click on RF exposure. Now you can read it later, but it's basically telling you that you need to know that you cannot keep the phone directly next to your body without exceeding the as-tested exposure guidelines. All smartphones come with some information that basically says, don't keep the phone in your pocket or you will exceed the as-tested exposure guidelines. Now, how many of you knew that before today? A mobile phone and the microwave oven use a very similar frequency. The difference between them is power. The power of the microwave oven is a thousand watts. And of course, that's power that can heat up a cup of water in maybe 60 seconds. The microwave oven, the mobile phone, the cordless phone, the Wi-Fi monitor, the baby monitor, they all use the same frequency. They differ in power. They also differ because mobile phones and Wi-Fi devices emit pulsed microwave radiation. It's the pulse, not the power, that appears to be biologically most important. The pulse that is erratic and irregular, like for thousands of minutes a month, for dozens of hours a week, over a lifetime, that irregular pulsed signal may be much more biologically important. And in fact, the continuous wave signals have a lot of therapeutic effects as are being applied in medicine today. This visualization from my colleague at the University of Athens shows you the variation in frequency, in amplitude, in pulse. All of these variables influence the properties a signal have and how it can affect a biological system. This is just to show you what happens in a four second mobile phone call. This is power density, power density indicated here. And of course, a phone is on standby, it's not doing too much, but 900 times a minute, it's looking to, for a signal. It says to the tower, where are you? Here I am, where are you? Here I am. It's smart. Now. When the phone rings, the worst time for you to put a phone right next to your head is when you answer it and say hello, because it's smart and it goes to max power. They're programmed to do that. Max power. Now, it's going to go to max power, you're going to listen, and then it will go up and down and up and down. And again, it's that variation, it's the delta, it's the cumulative integrative dose under the curve over a lifetime of exposure that looks to be biologically important. And this is a modeled microwave radiation dose of a six-year-old with greater levels to the frontal and temporal lobes, eyes and cheek. And watch this here. Now, yellow, white, and red are the hottest, all right? And if you look carefully, you will see it's going into the eye, the nose. Do it again, just so you'll get to see it. And partly into the brain stem. Now, that's just showing you that there's going to be some exposure into that area 
of a young head. It doesn't tell you that there's any biological effect, right? Now, the next slide is going to show you something that might be of interest to students and faculty here. And that has to do with exposure to the reproductive organs, I think you say the testicles, and bone marrow. And look here at the radiation as it gets into the groin area. And that's just from having a mobile phone modeled into the pocket. And this is a three-year-old brain that we modeled. And you see that by the end of that six-minute call, uh, the peak radiation, yellow and red, is, is, is getting all the way into almost both eyes. 